Welcome in to another episode of the Invest in You podcast presented by On3 Sports and NILU. Super excited today to be joined by Nick Denuso, the founder and CEO of Draftly. He is a graduate from Vanderbilt University, so always got to keep that against him. But Nick, thank you for joining me today, man. Well, thank you very much for having me, Grant. I'm so excited that we had the chance to do this too. And you know, even though I'm a Vandy grad, I still have much love for Tennessee. Hey, I love it, brother. So wanted wanted you just to to start off, lay the foundation, the NFT world, the crypto world. It seems like it really just came on strong, you know, on, on social media here in the last year, year and a half, two years. Explain your story, the background, and kind of what led to you eventually starting Draftly. Perfect. I love it. Um, it's a great question. And once again, thank you for asking it. Um, so um, my background is, you know, I went to Vanderbilt University. Graduated in 2016, um, originally went into investment banking in New York and San Francisco, um, found out that, you know, I, I love tech. I really do not like investment banking or finance that much. Um, ended up quitting um, and joining Techstars and helping launch 10 fintech companies in New York City back in 2018. Joined one of those companies as employee number one, absolutely fell in love with early stage startups. Um, company ended up not working out so well. And so I ended up uh, going to work at Amazon on their um, startup and VC uh, team but always had this burning passion for college sports. Um, you know, I was born and raised in rural Ohio. I played baseball and soccer growing up too. Ohio State is my favorite team. It's still my favorite team to this day. I've never missed a game. Um, and I really love the passion behind it. So I wanted to combine my interest um, in early stage startups and with college sports. And that gave birth to a company called Draftly. And so Draftly, uh, which was founded in 2020, um, was originally a platform to help high school athletes get recruited to play college sports. You know, I went through the recruiting process for both soccer and baseball. I was horribly outdated, right? Ultimately, I ended up going to Vanderbilt where I could focus my academics. Um, and so we originally started the platform um, back in 2021 on June 1st, too, and started selling it to different universities. And, you know, what we realized after July 1st when the NCAA changed the NIL rules was more and more universities were like, this is a cool platform, but what do you know about NFTs, non-fungible tokens? We have all these recruits and these athletes asking us about this. And it came up over and over again. And you know, for my days in New York and, um, you know, at Techstars and Amazon too, I was well-versed with um, blockchain technologies and you know, NFTs. And so we actually ended up running a targeted experiment and doing one of the first drops for an active NCAA men's basketball player, Wyatt Wilkes. Um, in October, that went really well. Um, ended up having a great partnership with the University of Miami too and doing a drop for Tyler Van Dyke and several other players too that ended up selling out. And then fully pivoted our platform to being an NFT platform that helps college athletes monetize their name image likeness through NFT creation um, in November. But ultimately what we're doing though is we're allowing athletes and fans to directly connect and support each other in community, right? What NFTs really are, um, and it's a really a fancy way of saying, you know, a JPEG, a video file, an audio file that exists on the blockchain. It's a way to create community and allow for people to directly connect in ways that they never could before. And that's just a little bit about Draftly. And I'm sure you have a million questions about, um, about crypto and blockchain. Well, you just touched on it too. You, you talked about connecting the fan and the athlete together. I think that's one of the neatest things of NIL was the, the yearning for you know fans across the country to have a way to connect with athletes like they've never been able to before. And you know, I'm so fascinated by this NFT world, this crypto world. And I think the first time you and I ever talked, you know, I spent the call just having you walk through literally ground zero, what NFTs and what the crypto world is, how it works, Bitcoin, Ethereum, all that stuff. And so for those listening, you know, we got a lot of athletes that listen to this podcast. And, you know, if they're interested in NFTs, the crypto world, cryptocurrency, walk them through, you know, yeah. what is, you know, blockchain? What is the crypto world? What is an NFT? And then how do they capitalize and, and how are they compensated off that? Fantastic question too. Um, so I know blockchain and crypto can sound really scary and um, really unaccessible for a lot of people. Um, but really what it is like at a very, very high level, zoom all the way out, blockchain is simply distributed ledger technology. Basically imagine this, this is a massive, uh, basically accounting notebook that says, hey, I own this asset, you own that asset too that exists simultaneously across billions of computers all across the world. And the really important thing to know about blockchain and all crypto is this is decentralized technology. So there's not a single um, you know, power or government or company too that controls the entire blockchain. 
Mm. The entire purpose of this is to give individuals like you, myself, and every athlete that listens to this podcast, you know, direct power and control over their digital assets um, in this world. So that's at a very high level what blockchain is. Now, what cryptocurrency is, i.e., you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, all these other you know coins that you've probably heard about um, or you've seen on Coinbase. What they are is they're really the trend, transaction mechanism, right, that allows for these blockchains to work, right? So let's say at a high level to you, like I have $100 worth of Bitcoin and I have a you know, crypto wallet. You um, have a crypto wallet, you only send that to you. I will go ahead and I will go and transfer that money on chain using something called like a private key. And ultimately there's a series of algorithms, right? That in a decentralized fashion allows for this transfer to happen without any banks. Um, you're able to actually collect that $100 of Bitcoin too. And we pay on what's called um, a gas fee, you see a transaction fee to use that network, right? Um, and that's really what the cryptocurrency originally was, was the transaction layer for overall blockchains. So mm-hmm. that's a very high level. I can get way down the weeds, but I'm not going to keep it, you know, pretty high level right now. But this has to be like the only thing in the world and, you know, to our knowledge that we can use that has no governing power over it. Is that yes. true? Yeah. Yeah, that's very true. And if you actually go back to like the philosophical and ethical underpinnings of, of uh, cryptocurrency, Go back to 2011, go back to Satoshi's, um, you know, white paper on Bitcoin too. This entire currency and this entire framework was created to get more individual power and freedom to all of us outside centralized banks, right? Um, and there's a million different cases of governments or organizations coming in and literally taking over bank accounts, straining your accounts of, of money, et cetera, right? And so this is more for individual freedom for all of us. Now, what's really cool about blockchain too is, um, you know, we actually had the first NFT wave um, back really in like 2017. You actually had this platform called CryptoKitties that first popped up. Um, really cool. But basically what NFTs stand for is non-fungible tokens, right? And so what fungibility is, it's the idea that, you know, I have one US dollar, you have one US dollar. They're, they're fully interchangeable, right? Doesn't matter which dollar you have, like it could be changed um, out infinitely and it would still have its purpose. Um, what NFTs really mean is there are digital assets that exist on the blockchain, right? That are ver- that are unique um, to that person, to that image, and that's provable and verifiable on chain. Mm. So in reality, what it is, it's like it's a JPEG, it's a video file, too, it's an audio file, it's whatever digital file that you want to say, hey, you know, my name is Nick and I own this, and I'm going to put this on the blockchain to show to the entire world that I own this assets, right? And then you can transact it, you can use it in the future. But the really cool thing is, let's say that you have like a photo of you catching like a game winning touchdown against Vanderbilt, right? In a rivalry game, like around Thanksgiving, right? Um, you can take that picture, right? And if anyone wants to use that in the future, um, they can buy it from you. And then every secondary and tertiary transaction, they would have to pay you a royalty fee, right? Wow. So all this content, right? That all these athletes and all these people are actually making, you know, every single day on Instagram, on TikTok, et cetera, will ultimately transition to being over as NFTs on a blockchain so that all of us can directly take back um, control of our data and information. Because right now we live in what's called Web2. So you have Amazon, Apple, Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, all these massive tech companies that are owning and using all of our data to aggrandize themselves. But in Web3, right, all of our internet data too can eventually exist on the blockchain and we have direct control over that. And more specifically for your uh, athletes, right, you will be able to use all these incredible plays that you make on the field too, or your personality, or whatever it is that you want to make a digital asset of, you can put that onto the blockchain and sell it directly to your fans and use it to connect. But where wow. NFTs wow. are really, really cool and why I love the space is NFTs are way more than just a JPEG, right? Um, NFTs ultimately um, are really tied back to the utility that comes with them, right? So for a draft athlete, for example, when an athlete in the future you know, issues their NFT, you know, when a fan buys that, they'll be able to get exclusive access to an entire community with that athlete, with that team, with other fans. They'll be able to use that NFT to buy you know, custom merchandise and swag, right? So let's say you sign a bunch of your cleats, right? You issue your epic NFTs on draft athlete, right, too. And everyone that buys an NFT gets that you know, signed cleat from you. And then even more wow. importantly, too, is you can tie exclusive interviews or access to podcasts or access to, you know, in real life events to your NFT. So like right now, um, for all of the college football players out there, um, you know, the NFL has actually rolled out NFL all day, their own NFT platform for highlights. And they're also working with Ticketmaster and stuff and others, right, to eventually use NFTs as tickets for all sporting events. So we're right now in like, you know, the first inning of this ultimate blockchain revolution, particularly within NFTs and sports. Holy cow. So when, when you say you've used the word drop, an NFT drop, there's a limited number of NFTs that get released and let's say it's 20. 
And there's only 20 of those until you release more, even if they're resold. They're not replicated. They're not you know, doubled. Th- those 20 can be resold on secondary markets and the athletes paid with a royalty. But and, until you release more, no matter where they go, who buys them, secondary market, the initial drop, there's always going to be 20. Exactly right. So you create this you know, scarcity right for these assets, uh, which is amazing. Then you can take these assets, these NFTs, and trade them on OpenSea and a variety of other secondary markets. Um, and yeah, it's, it's really cool because like, well, you know, one um, primary use right now for NFTs too is Twitter just rolled out NFT profile pictures. Um, Instagram is currently working that. on launching yeah. Yeah, their own NFT. Like one of my good buddies was literally just hired by Reddit, right, to help build out their own NFT, like, you know, platform. So eventually, like, you know, your NFTs is going to be like your your cultural, um, you know, basically passport into this world. It's how you say, hey, you know what? I'm Grant, and this is who I am, right? And I'm going to show that to you digitally. And then we even talk about like, the metaverse, right? So, you know, in the future, um, there's many companies like even Nike and Adidas have actually bought land in the metaverse, Um where you have these entire digital worlds, right? That will use NFTs as you know, the main conduit to say, hey, cool, here's my digital avatar, right? Um, I'm to Tennessee, I have an NFT in my Tennessee jersey, right? I'm gonna wear in the metaverse, right? Interact with other people. And hell, even Snoop Dogg actually has been hosting parties in the metaverse. So yeah. you know, right now it's, it's not just for sports, it's for everyone too. Like musicians are gonna use this like crazy, this really cool platform called Royal actually, where you can buy NFTs for your favorite artists um, and you actually get royalties from all their songs. So. This is coming for everyone, not just sports, not just musicians, literally going to change all of society. Absolutely. I want you to, to talk about, you know, the college athletes are being presented with so many different opportunities and deals, you know, here in the last eight months since July 1st came around and NIL became a thing. Every deal you look at, you know, what's the pros, what's the con? An athlete sitting here, you know, I'm having a tough time, you know, looking at uh, what's a negative, what's a con of an athlete you know, having an NFT drop, right? They only have opportunity to make money in that, right? And it can only gain value down the road. When you're talking to an athlete and you're, you know, selling them an NFT and, and why they should come to a drop with Draftly, what's your selling point with them? Like, what's the what's the positive long range plan? Are there any negatives to it? Or, you know, is, is it really a no brainer win-win for everyone? Uh, fantastic question. And for me, I think it's a no brainer win win for everyone. Um, but the main selling points for an athlete is, you know, you guys are busy, right? You guys are playing the sports that you guys love and training your asses off all day, right? You guys don't have time to, you know, dive through and do all these different appearance, appearances and constantly promoting on social media. You know, NFT is a really easy way where you work with us, like either give us an image or, you know, you work with like a, um, a draftly approved designer, right? To create your actual avatar too. You send out maybe like two or three tweets promoting your own NFT drop, which, by the way, you take the vast majority of all the proceeds from that too. Right. Like we're taking a very, very minimal cut, honestly, just to pay our engineering team. Um, and then you're able to sit back and kind of like watch that, um, you know, the revenue kind of flow into you. But more importantly, what I tell all of the athletes over Draftly, this is a way for you to connect with your at with your fans and with your full athlete community, right? Like this is how you build your brand, build your community over. Mm-hmm. You know, two, three, four, five years, right? So that when you're done playing your sport, right? And you know, hopefully you go to the NFL or the NBA or a professional league, but if you don't, you have this massive community of people too that you're engaging with on a regular basis that helps you for life after your sports. And then more importantly too is, this is your entry point into Web3, which is a massive economic revolution, right? That anyone under the age of 30 will use intimately in all of our professional lives in the future, right? So not only are you making money off your name, image, likeness, not only are you building actually your brand and directly connecting with your fans, building community, but you're also educating yourself on what is the future, you know, basis of the economy for the next 20, 30, 40 years. That is, that is just so neat. And I'm going to have a question on the back end, kind of on what the future mm-hmm. looks like and your kind of prediction, but, you know, to date, you guys have dropped, you know, 10 different NFTs for athletes so far. I know you have a, a bunch more down the road and some pretty soon, but what does the market look like for those athletes? Is it, you know, predominantly fans of those schools that they're at? Are there, you know, NFT collectors out there that are just looking for valuable ones that go and just snatch them up? Um, or, you know, is it kind of a, a hybrid of, of each for, for all the different athletes? I just want to know what kind of that market range is. So when an athlete has a drop, who should they expect to go out and be snatching those up? Great question too. And so the NFT market, like we know, we're still very early on until it's ever evolving and changing. Um, but we found the vast majority of people that are purchasing the NFTs of the athletes we dropped are fans. 
you know, there are people that are, you know, sitting on their couch or like, you know, watching these games the weekend too. I'm saying, you know, I love this team. I love this player too. You know, I want to, you know, directly invest in them and I want to have a piece of like, you know, their future. Um, because ultimately, you know, what makes college sports so fantastic is, you know, it's a full team, um, team endeavor for all of us, right? Like, you know, I love Ohio State, for example, because when I was like, you know, two, three, four, five years old, right? Too, I remember watching it with my dad and my brother too. We all have these deep emotional connections to these teams um, and they want to feel like they're part of that, right? And this NFT drop gives them that ability to feel connected to these athletes and these teams that they know and they love. Um, so it's a lot of just fans. And also we've intentionally priced our NFTs much lower than we can. So we have three rarity tiers. We have one legendary, one of one auction process. Um, we have uh, the second tier of NFTs, which is what we call epics, which is generally one of 100, only at $75. And then we have limited NFTs, which is generally one of you know 500 for um, most of our athletes. But they only charge $25 because we at Draftly want to make sure this is a true fan-driven platform for these athletes. Now, you also do have uh, collectors that will come in and, you know, anyone needs to can just go into DAP Radar to um, or go into do analytics, right, and see like the billions of dollars of, you know, constant trading back and forth in NFTs. And so you will have some people that will buy um, your NFTs because they think that you're going to go make it in the NFL or you're going to make it in the NBA and that your NFT is going to 20 to 30x in price. Um, but really what we're doing at Draftly is we want to focus more on the average fans because we really see this as a community creation platform where NFTs are quite simply the tool, right? You know, we right. all exist, right? And we all want to support each other, right? So how do we just do that? So in, in the sense of the athlete, this is really just a glorified, futuristic version of the trading card market, right? It's a, well, it's a little bit more than that. Like that's how it's starting, right? It's, right. Really, at, its, at its base, right? When you yeah. talk about a guy going and, you know, getting a trading card and then reselling it and, you know, it's, yep. it's, it's increasing in value, you know, because of who it is, but also, you know, it keeps getting resold and, you know, the value goes up. That's kind of what it is here. Now, like there's one of them, it's getting sold to, you know, hundreds of different people all the time and it's increasing in value each time. It's really just the same thing, but now an electronic version that's secured, you know, there's no governing power over it. And there's more stuff that can be included with exclusive access and merchandise and the whole nine yards along with the actual, you know, face value of the, the NFT that they originally bought. Exactly. Yeah, you totally get it. Um, and really, I think we're going to we're going to focus. NFTs will eventually be primary. The value will be primarily driven on the utilities associated with them. I.e., is there signed merch with this? Is there exclusive like you know access or content to the athletes? Right. You know, is this uh, my ticket to go into an in real life you know events and experience? Right. And then in the yeah. future, if we're going to fast forward, where we're going to do draftly is you know when you buy you know your draftly NFT, it is your ticket into the draftly universe. Right. Where you gain exclusive access to different communities and channels. Right. You'll be able to eventually play like Draftly games, right? Where what we're going to allow um, our fans in the future, anyone that owns a Draftly NFT will be able to stake that NFT, um, earn the Draftly tokens, and then play like daily fantasy sports games. Um, so ultimately, that's what we're taking in the future. Um, and then like we talked about before, too, we have a, a ton of incredibly exciting ways for our fans and our athletes to actually directly own Draftly through this mechanism called DAO. Uh, we, we don't necessarily have to go in through right now. That might be a second uh, podcast episode like we were talking about, but um you know, these ideas of decentralized autonomous organizations where we give athletes and fans direct, direct control over the full community is ultimately where we want to take traffic in the future. And it's just so brilliant because when you talk about, you know, the different things you have access to and what you get included, you know, when you get NFT, you know, people are already going out and getting signed merchandise. Everyone already is, you know, you know, paying money to collectives and paying money to athletes to do meet and greets and, you know, get their highlights exclusively and do, you know, Zoom calls with them. And so now, you know, it's really honing that all in and they're getting one product, but, you know, they're getting a bunch of services along with it, right? Exactly. And you know, it's brilliant for this too. And good for the, for everyone involved is let's say you're the fan, right? And you're like, fantastic. I love, you know, University of Tennessee, right? So you buy your NFT to be able to go to these events, right? Um, and meet like with yourself, for example. And then you can actually sell that NFT then and then use those proceeds to buy another NFT of a new player that you like, right? And right. so you create this continual um, interactions within the community and in the athletes that makes it so beautiful. And what's great is like, you know, we're not facilitating this. Like we're simply the technology infrastructure. It's the fans and the athletes that control literally everything. Nick, it's so hard to just wrap your mind. And, you know, the, the more we talk, the more I'm getting it. But, you know, just like with anything, when you have no sense of what it is, because there's nothing, anything like it. You know, it's it's kind of always hard to grasp grasp the uh, uh, what it is and where it's going, and you know, is is it good? Is it bad? Is it sustainable? But like the more you talk to me, 
you know, it really does sound like a no brainer. And I know you've told me many times and and in closing, I want to just let you talk about where you see the NFT world, you know, the different things, blockchain and crypto and whether it's ticketing, whether it's, you know, yeah. selling exclusive merchandise at the university level from, you know, their IP and, you know, uh, you know, stuff that the the bookstore can sell like yeah. 10 years from now. And, and I'm not just saying, you know, in, in, you know, 2032, but I'm talking, you know, within the next 10 years and even, you know, in the, in the short term till then, where is this going? Where do you see it going? Or do you already hear some universities and businesses, you know, tapping into it on, you know, some Fantastic ways that we, we've seen it already, or I just want to let you talk about where yeah, you kind of see of it where people can see an alternative angle on it. So, you know, I'm going to start off by talking about sports, where I see sports going, and then I'll talk about like where I see society going writ large with blockchain. So with sports, uh, the next big thing you're going to see right now, um, particularly on the college level is you're going to see a lot of these NIL collectives, right? Start using NFTs as an avenue to directly compensate athletes. So you can look at the University of Miami, you can look at the University of Texas, you can look at Ohio State, right, too. And there's these massive booster groups that want to start, you know, giving their money directly to the players because we all know the players, ones on the field, actually giving, you know, the value and the product we all know and love. And so it is my prediction, right, that they will then use NFTs um, in partnership with these players, right, to start compensating them directly on the field. Instead of saying, hey, you know, tweet something out for $50,000, right? Like, that's not a, you know, sustainable business model, right? So right. you see these right. NIL collectives ultimately shift. I think you'll see a lot of brands do partnerships with athletes via NFTs, right? And it's just a much cleaner, safer mechanism that's also fully legal and compliant with the NCAA and, and state laws. Um, I think that's the, one of the first near-term things we're doing. And, you know, in full disclosure, we're also working on this as well. Um, and then two, what I think you'll see is you're going to start seeing um, fans um, buy their tickets as NFTs. And the reason why this is going to happen is right now in the ticketing world, right? So our lead advisor and, and our investor too is actually Colin Evans, one of the founders of StubHub. You know, it's ticketing world inside and out. Um, and so right now, like I actually have the GM, Akshay Khanna of um, Subhub North America, right? He actually is on our contract as well. And they're actually working on, you know, the biggest problem with ticketing is the secondary and tertiary ticket markets, right? So if you're the University of Tennessee, right, you issue tickets, you only make money off of that initial, uh, you know, ticket sale. But we all know that there's resellers, right, that come on, buy a bunch of tickets and then resell them for three or four X, right? right. The University right. of Tennessee and the athletes, the USC, none of that, right? So with NFTs too, every single like ticket that gets sold in the secondary tertiary market, right, a portion of that's going to go back to the university and back to the athletes, right? Mm. So ticketing is the biggest no-brainer. I know the NFL is already working on it. I know StubHub's working on it. I know Ticketmaster's working on it right now too. That will eventually become ubiquitous across all of sports and also all of music and festivals. You already saw Coachella issue their first NFT tickets, actually. So, so are, those, are those ticketing platforms just going to become you know official? you know, taking partners of these schools and then they'll compensate the school on when these tickets resell? That is a fantastic uh, um, question, right? And so with the ticketing market is incredibly complex due to all the legal and licensing deals that are done. Also, what I see happening is these big ticketing platforms issuing NFTs that will become tickets, right? And then they'll work with the university. So the university will just say, hey, StubHub, hey, Ticketmaster, hey, SeatGeek to, you know, I don't work with you guys. They're going to go ahead and launch NFT tickets, right? They'll collect all of the money um, from the secondary tertiary transactions and just give it back to the university. So I think that's what like one of the first things will happen. Kings of Leon, by the way, um, loves NFTs and done some NFT tipping for some of the shows as well, too. Um, so that's really what I see happening in sports. Um, the NFT market in sports will kind of bifurcate. You're going to start seeing true collectible NFTs, like think about NBA Top Shop, NFL All Day, right? Where it's like highlights of in-game moments, right? That are you know, quote unquote collectibles. That's going to be one of the markets. And then you're going to see platforms like Draftly, where we're focused on creating the community between the athletes and the fans and really focusing on the utility, right? It's like, you know, the meeting greets with the athletes or events, right? The signed merchandise, right? The access to communities. And that's where I kind of see the sports NFT world kind of like separating the two. Um, now, if you want to kind of zoom out to overall blockchain and NFT, you're going to see continued adoption by the general public in the United States around the world too, of blockchain infrastructure technology, one only needs to look at like venture capital firms like A16Z or Paradigm or Sequoia that have raised billions of dollars and are investing into a variety of tech platforms. Um, and you know, on a higher level too, you're going to see a lot of the financial and you know institutions and industries start to adopt blockchain in a big way. Let's take last year as an example, right? You know, we all know inflation blew out, right, because uh, Federal Reserve doing you know massive fiscal stimulus and quantitative easing rights. I think the inflation rate was somewhere between like seven to eight percent, depending on where you look at it, right? Last year, which means that your savings account is actually losing money over time. 
Whereas if you were to take your money and invest it into cryptocurrency, for example, and use things like DeFi protocols um, and stake it, right? You can earn you know, anywhere from 10 to 15 to 20%, right? On your savings accounts. So on a financial level, it makes a lot of sense for people um, across the entire segments of society to start moving into uh, blockchain for financial incentives, as well as being able to use the ticketing platforms in you know, music and sports on important space. And the really exciting thing is that like, we're really, once again, in like, you know, the first inning or the second inning to where we're all going to be in the future. Think about internet adoption. The internet was, was invented back in the 90s, right? And it wasn't until like, you know, what, you know, the past several years too, that we've really seen like 5G come online to us being able to use your phone all over the place too. This is going to take decades to ultimately roll out. And I'm really excited for people like, you know, you and your athletes that will be the people building in this space. It's people like us that can really create the future in a very decentralized way. There is no doubt. And, and Nick, I, I can't tell you how much I learned just listening to you today. I know everyone that's going to view this and listen to it, um, not only learned about Draftly, but got a, a crash course on NFTs, crypto world, where it's going, where it's at now. So I can't thank you enough for coming on. Um, look forward to many more. I know this is kind of a, an, an ever-changing world, whether it's NIL, whether it's NFT. So I uh, can't wait to have you back on and uh, update us more on, on what Draftly is doing, what the uh, marketplace looks like as a whole. Well, thank you so much, Brian. This has been wonderful too. Whatever you need me to come on to, I'm always happy or to even talk about, you know, NFTs, blockchain, entrepreneurship, whatever it is to help you and your athletes. Love what you guys are doing. Absolutely. Enjoy it, man. Appreciate it. Thanks so much for listening to the Invest in You podcast by On3 Sports. We look forward to our new episode releasing next week. In the meantime, follow along with us on social media at On3NILU on Twitter and Instagram.